There's a mystery unfolding in the depths of space, one that's been quietly drifting across our skies. We have a name for it, Three-Eye Atlas, but giving it a name doesn't mean we understand it, not yet. Because Three-Eye Atlas is strange, it looks strange. It moves in unexpected ways, and the more we study it, the more questions it raises. Some astronomers have even begun to wonder, could it have been watching us all along? Our story begins in the deserts of Namibia, at the southern edge of Africa, one of the darkest places on Earth. During a rare lunar eclipse, when Earth's shadow completely dimmed the moon's glow, astrophotographers seized a rare opportunity. With the night sky at its darkest and clearest, they turned their cameras not toward the familiar constellations, but toward Three-Eye Atlas. What they saw was astonishing. The object shimmered a bright, unnatural green against the endless black of space. But here's the thing. According to everything we know, it shouldn't be green at all. No natural explanation currently fits what they saw. Scientists believe Three-Eye Atlas is an interstellar comet, a wanderer from another star system, shaped by forces beyond our own sun's reach. Like comets we know, it carries a glowing halo of gas and dust, the coma, and a sweeping fan-shaped tail. But being from another star system, it's no surprise that it behaves a little differently. And yet, it glows a vivid green. Why? No one knows for sure. Could it be something artificial? A reflection of alien engineering? Maybe, or maybe, as some scientists joke, Whoever made it just prefers the color green. What we do know is that its coma contains carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon bonded with oxygen, a completely different compound. And that only deepens the mystery surrounding this interstellar traveler. The mystery of Three-Eye Atlas only deepens. Its glow might make it one of the brightest objects of its kind, but brightness alone can't explain that green hue. And the more we examine its composition, the stranger it becomes. Inside its coma, the glowing cloud surrounding the nucleus. Astronomers have found an abundance of carbon dioxide, CO2. But here's the twist. CO2 isn't supposed to dominate. In most comets, water vapor far outweighs carbon dioxide. Three-Eye Atlas is the complete opposite richer in CO2 than in H2O. That imbalance alone makes it unique. Yet the oddities don't stop there. The coma is also filled with metal, particularly nickel. Now, trace amounts of metal are common in comets, but not like this, and certainly not this far from the sun. Usually, metal vapors appear only when a comet ventures dangerously close to the sun's intense heat hot enough to vaporize those metallic elements. But Three-Eye Atlas isn't anywhere near that close. In fact, nickel was first detected when it was drifting quietly between Mars and Jupiter, far too cold for metal to boil away naturally. So, why is nickel being released at all? Some researchers, half-jokingly and half-curiously, have speculated a wild idea. What if this object isn't a comet at all? If it were some kind of artificial probe or craft, the high nickel levels might make sense. After all, nickel-based alloys are a key component in spacecraft and rocket engines. And burning those engines produces both nickel vapor and CO2 rich exhaust. It's an extraordinary thought, but not one most astronomers are ready to endorse. Still, even if aliens aren't involved, Three-Eye Atlas refuses to behave like anything natural we've seen before. Its motion through the solar system is the next puzzle. Since its discovery in early May, astronomers have tracked it with precision, and its trajectory and speed have remained almost perfectly steady. No acceleration, no slowdown, no drifting off course. At first glance, that might sound ordinary,
But for a comet, it's not. When comets approach the sun, they heat up and begin to sublimate, turning ice directly into gas. That gas escapes unevenly from the comet's surface, acting like tiny thrusters that push it around. This creates what's known as non-gravitational acceleration, or NGA, a measurable change in the comet's motion caused by its own outgassing. But 3I Atlas doesn't play by those rules. Despite showing clear signs of sublimation, including a small tail that formed toward the sun and later stretched into a longer one facing away, its movement remains astonishingly consistent. Its velocity and trajectory fluctuate by only about 1.5 kilometers per day, an almost negligible variation for an active comet. In short, 3I Atlas looks like a comet, but moves like a machine. When compared to other interstellar visitors, 3I Atlas stands out not because it's erratic, but because it's too stable. Among the few interstellar objects we've ever tracked, its behavior is the most restrained. Take 2, I Borisov, for example, the most normal of the interstellar trio. Its movement fluctuated by more than 100 kilometers per day, roughly a hundred times greater than the tiny shifts we see from 3I Atlas. So perhaps you might think 3I Atlas is simply larger, harder to push around. That would make sense, until you compare it with Hale-Bopp, one of the biggest comets ever observed in our own solar system, at least as massive as 3I Atlas, perhaps even larger. And yet, Hale-Bopp still drifted by over 10 kilometers of non-gravitational acceleration per day, about 10 times more than 3I Atlas. Then there's Oumuamua, the first interstellar object ever discovered, and arguably the strangest. At certain points, its course changed by more than 1,000 kilometers per day. Wild, unpredictable, and completely unbound by ordinary physics. Compared to those cosmic travelers, 3I Atlas is the calm one. Its trajectory is so precise, so unnaturally steady, that you could almost believe it's being guided, as if some unseen hand is steering it through our solar system. Now, there may be a perfectly natural explanation for this. Perhaps its internal composition, mass, or spin stabilizes it more effectively than we understand. But, what if that stability is in coincidence? If 3I Atlas were truly being steered, if it had the ability to alter its path, then it could, in theory, change direction whenever it wanted. At the moment, projections suggest it will swing around to the far side of the sun, opposite from Earth, as it passes through the inner solar system. That means we won't be able to observe it closely, and it won't be able to see us either, unless, of course, it decides to slow down. If it does, and somehow emerges from behind the sun waiting on our side, then this mystery from another star system might not just be passing by, it might be staying to watch. Here's a theory so bold, it almost sounds like science fiction. Yet, it's rooted in one of astronomy's most famous unsolved mysteries. Back in 1977, Astronomers at Ohio State University were scanning the skies with the Big Ear Radio Telescope, a massive ear built to listen for unusual signals from space. On one ordinary day, the telescope captured something so extraordinary that the scientist reviewing the data circled it and scribbled one word in the margin. Wow, that name stuck. What they'd found was a powerful narrowband radio signal lasting 72 seconds, coming from deep space. It didn't match any known transmission from Earth, nor the Sun, nor any planet in our solar system. It seemed to originate from the constellation Sagittarius, 
a direction rich with stars, but empty of known radio beacons. The first striking feature of the WOW signal was its sheer energy. To transmit a focused radio beam across interstellar space at that strength would require a civilization capable of harnessing power on a truly massive scale, perhaps even a star's worth of energy. If it wasn't artificial, then it had to be some previously unknown natural phenomenon. The second striking feature was its frequency. Hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, produces a characteristic radio line at 1420 megahertz. This hydrogen line is considered a natural calling card of intelligent life because any advanced civilization would know it. The WOW signals frequency, exactly 1420 megahertz. If you wanted to send a simple we're here message to the galaxy, this is how you do it. In the decades since, no signal like it has ever been detected again. Now, here's where things get interesting. Astronomers have traced the incoming path of 3I Atlas backward, and its interstellar trajectory also points broadly to the constellation Sagittarius, the same region where the WOW signal originated. A coincidence? Perhaps. But in 1977, when that mysterious signal reached us, 3I Atlas would have been skimming the outer edge of our solar system, far beyond Pluto's orbit. Could it have been sending us a message? A kind of cosmic heads up before making its way inward? We don't know. We may never know. It's a theory, unproven, unconfirmed, but also unrefuted. And that's the beauty and the challenge of discoveries like this. Objects such as 3I Atlas force us to keep our minds open to the endless possibilities of the cosmos. The truth may be stranger than anything we've imagined, and it's heading our way.